Hey guys, thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. I remember the first time I saw Johnny Yoon. It was The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson and there was this Asian guy doing stand-up on the show. The year was 1979 and I was 13 years old. I've never seen an Asian comedian before and this guy was a Korean comedian. The first thing I thought was, wow, so that's what I'm going to look like when I get older. He spoke with a broken English accent and I probably was a little ashamed of that because everyone at the time thought Asians were fresh off the boat and talked like that. But at the same time, he also showed that Asians can be more than just owners of dry cleaners and Chinese fast food restaurants. This guy was a stand-up comedian and Carson liked him. Carson liked him enough to invite him back on the show 34 times and he was the first Asian guest on The Tonight Show. Johnny Yoon died on March 8, 2020. He was 83 years old. He did three movies that I remember. Cannonball Run with Jackie Chan, They Call Me Bruce, and the sequel, They Still Call Me Bruce. I always wondered why he didn't do a third film. Stop Calling Me Bruce. I won't go into detail about his life, so here is his stand-up. Again, this was the mid-1970s, so some jokes are dated, but there are others that never get old. to new shows that I was talking about. Uh, this young gentleman is going to have one of those. It's called Sergeant TKU. And uh, he's from Korea. He made his, uh, started with us on The Tonight Show. We found him playing a comedy place called The Horn in Santa Monica. And he'll be opening at the Las Vegas Hilton with Steve Lawrence and Edie Gourmet, March 6th for three weeks. And uh, his new series is going to be aired soon. Would you welcome, please, Johnny Yoon. Johnny? from Korea. <laughs> you know, in Korea, I was a very boring guy. But in America, I play backgammon. And I hang out at discotheques. And I know my sign. <laughs> now I'm boring in two countries. <laughs> I came from a poor family, you know. <laughs> my parents couldn't afford to have electricity. And they used to feed me and my brother garlic so they could find us in the dark. <laughs> Ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to come to America. And I learned a little bit about America. And um, I admire President George Washington most. One of the reasons is that um, he never blamed his problems on the previous administration. <laughs> I love Lincoln. I couldn't wait till I come to this country and drive one. <laughs> but I, now I live in Hollywood. Hollywood's been very good to me, you know. But I can't find imported shirt. They're all from Korea. <laughs> Did you ever reach into your pocket and pull out a little piece of paper that says, inspected by number 14? That's my brother. <laughs> and Hollywood is tough also. You know, when I become an American citizen, I wanted to get rid of my accent. So I went to a speech teacher. I said, how can I get rid of my accent fast? He said, go back to Korea. <laughs> six months to get my agent when I first met him he said what do you do I said I'm a comedian he said comedians a dime a dozen I said but I'm different I'm an oriental he said oh yeah then why didn't you say so <laughs> and I just bought a pair of Simon's cats and I paid $375 just because they've got the most beautiful blue eyes. I pet them on their head. The context fell out. <laughs> and I also
also bought lots of plants. And my friends told me, if I talk to plants, they'll grow taller and fast. And I've been talking to my plants. They turn yellow. But I smoke them anyway. Now I have one plan left. A Venus fly trap. It ate my zipper. <laughs> you know, I, um, I'm kind of excited about a new friendly relationship between America and Red China. But you know, uh, I, I have one thing that I don't understand. I read an article in a magazine that says um, chi China is buying American X-rated movies for sex education for Chinese people. Now, a country with 950 million people need a sex education. <laughs> They don't need sex education. What they need is a food. In fact, the Chairman Mao was alive. When he was alive, he wrote a letter to uh, Russia asking for help. Send us grains. We are starving. Russia replied, we are short of grains for ourselves. Tighten your belt. Mao replied, send us belts. <laughs> Because of this new situation between America and Red China, Russia is a little bit worried because they feel they're being isolated and they decide to go easy on things. And for the first time in history, Russia, they decide to give Russian people freedom of speech. In fact, recently, Russian newspaper Pravda ran a contest for best political jokes. First prize got 20 years. <laughs> But, you know, it's impossible to, uh, to understand politics. I don't worry about it. I'm very happy living in America, and I'm a single guy, you know. <laughs> in fact, I went to singles bar the other night. I met a girl, and she said to me, you know, I have never made love to a Korean guy. I said, me too. 